Hi guys, it's a blissfully rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and uh, I'm uh, honoring the, the passing of the late great Uncle Teddy K today. Uh, now that Teddy K is no longer with us, so uh, I'm going to carry on the tradition of the wild-eyed doomer. So, uh, anyway, uh, R.I.P. Teddy K. But in honor of that, on of uh, saying goodbye to Uncle Teddy, I have fished out my my uh, standard bearer T-shirt here to uh, wear to the wake of Uncle Teddy. And uh, so here it is, a blissfully rainy night. Now a Monday night, June 12th, 2023, and I'm thrilled to say the flash drought has paused. Love that term, flash drought here on June the 12th, 2023. So uh, I think we need to uh, send uh, Uncle Teddy on his way. We're just going to look for some flat-out, in-your-face doomer porn. I, you know, I haven't been over to medium.com in a while. It just, uh, good Lord, just the daily barrage of doom and gloom. But I was surprised by this article because of this fellow, Will Lockett. Will Lockett is known best on medium for being just an absolute hopeless, uh, uh, you know, hopium soaked, not hopeless, uh, the, the, well, a hopeless hopium soaked uh, apocaloptimist. So he's usually writing all of this stuff about how we are going to turn this freight train around so when Will Lockett gets concerned about some information, uh, you know, and starts sounding like a doomer, and I love it when we actually see the word collapse in a title, this is genuinely a chronicle of the upcoming collapse. Terrifying new study finds that ocean currents will soon collapse. Brace yourself for a globe-shaking marine ecological disaster. Have you seen the movie The Day After Tomorrow? This early noughties disaster, this early noughties disaster movie's whole plot revolved around climate change turning off global ocean currents and plunging the world into a sudden ice age. Many lambasted the film for exaggerating how soon the currents could collapse and how rapidly their knock-on effects can be felt as we thought that such events would not happen for well over a century. But a recent study which focused more on the Antarctic portion of these currents, found that global ocean currents could collapse in only 30 years. What's more, while the knock-on effects of this are completely different to those seen in the day after tomorrow, they are arguably no less devastating. The question has to be asked, is there anything we can do to stop this? Is there anything that humans can do to stop the collapse of global ocean currents at this point? Oh yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think you can insulate your home is what you can do, and maybe become a vegan. Uh, I saw this very story is on CNN right now. I noticed, uh, I read their version of the same story and noticed not one human being had a comment at the end of the CNN version. Let's start at the beginning. 
what are global ocean currents and what powers them? Well, here is a picture of uh, what global ocean currents are. And uh, this really is, I mean, all joking aside, this is a pretty good description. So when you're hearing this conversation uh, in the future, you know a little bit more about what they're talking about that will is able to put you know complicated uh, scientific studies into uh, you know turn 50 cent words into nickel words okay the global ocean current is a series of interlinked deep water and surface currents driven by winds and ocean saltiness. You see in the water near Greenland and in the Weddell Sea off Antarctica, massive volumes of ocean water freeze into giant ice sheets. When seawater freezes, it leaves behind its salt, making the waters around these ice sheets much saltier than normal seawater and therefore denser. This denser water sinks, drawing in new surface waters and creates a current. I never knew this. I'm 63 years old. I never knew that. I learned something from this article. Okay, so, you know, the denser water sinks, drawing in new surface waters and creates a current thanks to the deep topography of the seabed off Greenland and the Weddell Sea, this denser, saltier water is then pushed out towards the tropics as deep sea currents where they collect nutrients. Winds push surface water off the tropics toward the poles and in turn suck up these deep sea currents to the surface, creating a looping global ocean current that snakes around the entire world. You might think these currents are just a quirk of ocean dynamics, but they play a vital role in worldwide climate, are a crucial part of Earth's carbon cycle, and are an integral part of ocean ecosystems. This was published, I think, on World Ocean Day. I, I think Sandy's going to have a uh, show on the world's oceans, too. Maybe coming up right now. I don't know. Uh, so check her show out, too, on some of these subjects. You see... These currents bring warm surface water to the poles and cold waters to the tropics. This acts as a climate regulator, making weather patterns less extreme and sharing the Earth's heat more thoroughly through its latitudes. This helps make vast amounts of Earth's surface far more habitable. The ocean also absorbs carbon dioxide, turning it into carbonic acid. In fact, the ocean absorbs about 25% of our emissions, helping to delay, to delay human-driven climate change. The global ocean current takes the carbonic acid and buries it in the ocean's depths where it turns into carbonates and is safely buried away for millennia, uh -huh, I bet. As the deep sea part of the currents chugs along the sea floor, they pick up nutrients such as iron, phosphate, nitrogen, and calcium, these are vital for marine life and are surprisingly lacking in much of the world's sunlit seas, 
making the nutrients the limiting factor to how much life can exist in the oceans. So, where these deep sea currents upwell, you find massive, thriving marine ecosystems. So, how are these currents being stopped? Well, climate change. As the globe heats up, less and less polar ice is being formed, which decreases the rate of sinking water in the waters off Greenland and in the Weddell Sea. This acts in the same way as pinching a hose. And the rate of flow across the entire global currents also slows down. But if either the Weddell Sea or Greenland downflow mechanisms stop, it will collapse the entire global current system as the loop will be broken. If this happens, climate and ecological models predict far more extreme weather and a crash in marine biodiversity. Equatorial, near equatorial countries and even some subtropical countries like India could become too hot for year-round human settlement as unrestrained heat waves run wild each summer. Many northern hemisphere countries will experience winters so harsh that again year-round human settlement will be extremely challenging. Crucial currents like the Humboldt Current and the Gulf Stream will stop and effectively starve the ocean of nutrients, leading to marine ecosystem collapse. There's a lot going on here, guys. A lot of doom and collapse in this story. While these devastating, while these devastating knock-on effects are not the same as those in the day after tomorrow, they still have the potential to cause vast loss of human life and unrepairable damage to the environment and the biosphere. Despite this, scientists have been quite confident that this is not a pressing issue. You see, all of their climate models suggested that we would not see global ocean currents grind to a halt for centuries. And if you check out my uh, interview with uh, climatologist Wally Brecker, B-R-O-E-C-K-E-R. -E the last interview of Wally's life, I think I killed Wally because he died uh, right after I interviewed him. A few weeks after I interviewed him, he dropped dead. Now, Wally Brecker, who knows as much about this subject uh, as anybody on the planet, uh, laughed off the idea this whole thing about the global uh, ocean currents collapsing anytime soon. Uh, he, he completely poo-pooed the idea. But of course, I think, did Wally, I think he died four years ago. So obviously, uh, Wallace Brecker uh, is not around to read this report because I would like to get his comments on it. All right, so the climate models, you know, in the past suggested that we would not see global ocean currents grind to a halt for centuries, but the studies that these models were based on were massively biased toward the northern hemisphere, as most studies into these currents are based on those in the northern stretch of the Atlantic Ocean. That's the one that you, you, you know, you usually hear about. However, 
a groundbreaking new study, which is linked here in the article, and you know, CNN was talking about this same study, suggests that while the northern hemisphere Greenland downflow will be stable for well over a century, the southern hemisphere Weddell Sea downflow is far more sensitive to climate change. The models used by this study predict that by 2050, the Weddell Sea downflow rate will reduce by a massive 42 percent. This might be enough of a reduction to destabilize the current and break the loop. At the very least, it will massively reduce the global ocean current's power, but it is said to get, it is set to get worse as their models predict that this downflow will shut off by the end of the century and fully collapse the global ocean current. So 77 years, uh, the global ocean current will come crashing to a halt. The question is, will anybody be there to see it? Just a reminder that even a small decrease in the power of the global ocean currents will lead to accelerated climate change as less carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, deadly extreme weather, and marine ecosystems potentially collapsing. So this discovery is huge. It takes the already tiny amount of time we have to change our ways and save the planet and practically cuts it in half. There you go, the tiny amount of time we have to change our ways and save the planet has now been cut in half, guys. So, how do we avert this global disaster, save the oceans, and keep our climate stable enough to be habitable? Well, we need to make sure, make sure we hit our climate goals, uh-huh, and become carbon neutral by 2050. Yes, you know, 10 years after uh, the Weddell Sea current has collapsed by 42 percent, you know, that 2050, and keep, and keep global warming to only one and a half degrees Celsius or to see at a push, whatever that means. This way, there should be. All we got to do is keep it one and a half, two at a push, and this way, there should be enough sea ice to power to keep the currents just about ticking over. This means we have less than 27 years to get our collective act together and reshape how our entire civilization operates. And I, the opium-soaked apocalyptimist Willock and himself, and I am not sure if we can do that, hmm. Will Lockett, Apocaloptimist, is not sure that we can completely redesign and reshape global industrial civilization to keep uh, us inside our one and a half degree target in the next 27 years. Will Lockett's not sure if we can pull this one off. <laughs> oh boy. But anyway, 
I am just glad to see the rain, the global rain current has not completely collapsed. Uh, and uh, I am hoping for water in my pond. I hear the frogs out thoroughly enjoying uh, the rainy night. So at least for a day or two, maybe we're not so effed here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Get out there and enjoy your ocean currents while you still can. Bye, guys.